What's up everyone? My name's VJ. Welcome to today's tax series vlog. Today we're going to be talking about a strategy that you can employ right around the year end as you plan around the exercise of your stock options. So this strategy is called the AMT crossover specifically to supplies to only people that own incentive stock options. So if you're an ISO holder, listen up. If you only hold non-qualified stock options or NSOs, this may not apply to you, but may still be really good information to know going forward. So let's jump right in. For you ISO holders, this thing that you need to be aware of is something called the alternative minimum tax, right? So why does the AMT apply? Well, exercising ISOs can, in, can create what's called the AMT and uh, allow you, uh, force you to actually pay an additional tax to the regular tax. So let's take a step back here. What is the AMT? The AMT is a secondary tax that you're gonna be calculating every single year, whether you know it or not. So you probably use a SAC software called TurboTax or, uh, or Tax Act or something like that to calculate your taxes. In a given year, your tax software is gonna calculate your regular tax on one hand, your AMT on another hand, and the greater of the two is a tax you're gonna pay. In a given year though, your regular tax almost always exceeds your AMT, so you never have to pay the AMT. Most Americans don't pay the AMT. So why are we talking about it? Well, it applies to you as an ISO holder because exercising ISOs can potentially increase your AMT so it's greater than your regular tax, meaning you're gonna have an AMT liability. You're gonna be paying an additional tax, unfortunately. So. You know, not the greatest situation, you're gonna be paying additional tax, but there's a little bit of a nice benefit if you can employ it correctly here as the year end comes. The one thing that you need to note is that there's a little bit of a gap. The nature of the way the AMT works is that your regular tax, if you just have a salary, for example, it's gonna almost always be greater than your AMT. Now that leaves us a little small gap that you can exercise ISOs right up to a point where uh, your AMT equals your regular tax, right? So what does that mean? You can exercise ISOs tax-free up to that point. So every single year you have a small little gap that you can exercise ISOs tax-free. Now the amount of ISOs the, the, depends on your company situation as your and your individual situation. So this is really, really important. Um, the reason being, if you don't use this by the end of the year, call it by the end of 2020, you know, call it January 1st, 2021, you're going to lose this potential tax benefit. So really important, important tax planning strategy. If you haven't, if you own ISOs and you haven't exercised any, you may want to look into exercising just enough to make that AMT equal to the regular tax. So you can exercise those completely tax-free. It's a great strategy to employ if you're only looking to exercise a small amount of your options or if you're looking to exercise any options in general uh, because there's something called the AMT credit. We'll talk about that on a different vlog for a different day. Um, but for those of you who are interested in employing this strategy, we have a great tool for you at secfi.com. It's completely free to use. Go to secfi.com, create an account, type in your equity details. If you click the Insights tab, there's a tool called the AMT Crossover. What this will do is this will calculate exactly how many ISOs you can exercise completely tax-free by the end of the year. Make sure you take a look at this. This is a great strategy to employ that a lot of people don't know about. Very, very important for year-end tax planning. Hopefully it's helpful. Thank you all. We'll talk soon. Next session, we're going to be talking about something called the AMT Credit. Really excited to talk about that one with you guys. But take care. 